Hello everyone and welcome back into another Genshin Impact video. Today we'll have a look at Nahida and why she might just be the, one of the best, one of the strongest supports in the game. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, Nahida or Lesser Lord Kuzanali or Buer, however you wanna call her. Uh, she is a Catalyst user, she builds uh, Dendro powers because it's not a vision. And uh, yeah, she focuses mostly on elemental mastery and dealing off field damage. This is the build I suggest. Usually going for dendro damage and some crystals, nothing too important. Try to focus mostly on elemental mastery and you should be mostly fine. Moving on to her talents, her normal attacks are a 4 hit combo that performs uh, these attacks against opponents dealing dendro damage. The multipliers are nothing great, you usually won't use her at normal attacks that much unless you level them up which I don't suggest, and that's basically it. The charge attack is quite cool looking, and the normal attacks are just adorable. It's like the normal attacks, with the heart shape at the end, it's less so adorable. And the charge attack is like this square thing should it performs in front of you, uh, which has a bit of an AoE, so you can hit more enemies, and that's basically it. You cannot hit uh, things that are up in the air with the normal attacks, uh, but you can with her charge attack, uh, but it's weird and sometimes you won't hit them, so that's why I suggest just don't use her normal attacks. Moving on to her elemental skill, all schemes to know, uh, this is her best skill, let's say. Uh, it's uh, very unique and very cool. You can mark up to 8 enemies with the skill, applying a debuff that will let them take damage every 2.5 seconds depending on your attack and your elemental mastery. The duration of the debuff is 25 seconds, so it will last basically forever. The cooldown for just tapping the ability is 5 seconds, and the cooldown for holding it is 6 seconds. The difference between pressing and holding is very uh, noticeable. If you press it, you deal like this AoE. Or you can hold the ability and enter the aiming mode. This allows you to, well, aim and target more enemies and more things around you, which is definitely better. The uh, 3 karma purification damage only happens whenever you trigger an elemental reaction or uh, the enemies take damage from dendro course, that way she would deal that amount of damage and it is a lot of damage. Also you can only stay in the hold mode for 5 seconds and you can mark up a maximum of 8 enemies. Whenever the Seed of Skanda deals damage, it will deal damage to all the enemies that are linked, so it's better to have more opponents marked. Finally we have her elemental burst, the Illusory Heart. Uh, this will create this huge domain around you that will basically get buffed depending on whatever other party members are in your team. If you have pyro characters, the 3 karma purification from your elemental skill will deal more damage. If you have electro characters, uh, the cooldown of her elemental skill damage, uh, which means this 2.5 seconds, is reduced by a fixed amount. And if you have hydro characters, this will increase the Shrine of Maya's duration, which is uh, the domain she creates. And here you can see that if you have one or two characters, the buff will uh, increase. Base duration of the ability is 15 seconds and the cooldown is only 13.5, so you can have this ability always active at all times, and the cost is like super low at just 50. And this is how her burst looks like. It's uh, gonna be huge, so be prepared. That's her burst, and you're gonna run out, but you can see that AoE is completely insane. Uh, you basically cover all the map, it's the biggest AoE in the game, I suppose. I mean, it has to, because it's like, just completely nonsense. So yeah, very very cool. Then we have her passive talents, Compassion Illuminated in this case, will uh, basically make the Shinra of Maya increase your active character's elemental mastery by 25% of the elemental mastery of the party member that has the most amount of elemental mastery. So for example, if you have in your party a character that has 1000 elemental mastery, you will get 250 elemental mastery uh, on the active character that's standing in the Shrine of Maya. The maximum amount you can get is 250, so uh, if you have more than 1000 elemental mastery on your other characters, it's like not that important basically. Then we have Awakening Elucidated uh, that basically allows Nahida to get more damage depending on her elemental mastery. Every point beyond 200 will grant her 0.1 bonus damage and 0.03% more crit rate to 
her elemental skill debuff damage, so it's a lot more damage. And if you manage to get a thousand elemental mastery on her, you basically will deal uh, the maximum amount, which is 80% bonus damage, and you also gain 25% more crit rate. Finally, we have her unique talent. Uh, this allows her to use her elemental skill in other ways. She can interact with some harvestable items and basically collect them from a distance. And you can also do something else. Uh, in this case, I have this guy over here, Ash, the researcher, and I can use my elemental skill on him. And well, That's what happens, you can read people's minds. Also, you can collect uh, some stuff around you. Uh, doesn't work for some items, like in this case for these fireflies, it doesn't apply to them. Uh, but you can collect them fine. Uh, it does apply for other resources though, like flowers and plants around the map, and probably a lot more. Moving on to constellations, uh, you can see I have constellation 1, that's where we're gonna start. And constellation 1 allows her to basically always have the maximum amount of uh, party members, let's say to get the buff for the Shinromeya, which means you do not need two characters here, uh, you just need one and you will have the maximum amount, so if I have one pyro character, I will then get this one, that applies for electro characters and hydro characters, so you always have the highest buff, which is really nice, and this constellation allows her to have basically all those elements in her team and increase her damage by a crazy amount. Her second constellations allows her to debuff enemies even more, because basically whenever you mark them with your elemental skill, now uh, if you damage them with burning, bloom, hyperbloom or burgeon, they will also have a chance to crit, so those reactions can deal even more damage, uh, while if you affect them with quicken, aggravate or spread, their defense is decreased by 30% for 8 seconds. Constellation 3 uh, increases her elemental skill level by 3, constellation 4 increases her elemental mastery depending on how many enemies you affect with your elemental Elemental skill. Constellation 5 increases her illusory heart by 3 levels. And finally, Constellation 6 allows Nahida to kinda become a DPS for a few seconds, because this time, whenever you mark the enemies with your elemental skill and they are standing in the illusory heart, at the Shrine of Maya, whenever you hit them with your normal or charge attacks, they will take another Dendro instance of damage, which is based on 20% of her attack and 400% of her elemental mastery. You can only trigger this 6 times, and the effect only lasts for 10 seconds after you uh, trigger the first attack, and you can trigger one of these instances of damage every 0.2 seconds, so it's very powerful, does a, probably a lot of damage, I haven't tested that, and yeah, overall makes her deal more damage, so why not? Let's now talk about weapons. There are uh, many, many free-to-play options, and this is not one of them. Uh, we start with the best one, which is a Thousand Floating Dreams. This is her signature weapon. This weapon has a base attack of 542, which we don't really care that much, while the Elemental Mastery amount, 265, that's a high, high amount of Elemental Mastery, and it does also give her more damage or Elemental Mastery, depending on party members. So if you have other party members that are the same element as the character that's equipped this weapon, in this case Nahida, so more dendro characters in your party, your elemental mastery will be increased by 32. While if you have characters that are a different element from Nahida, in this case, so whatever other element that's not dendro, the character that has the weapon will get a 10% bonus elemental damage for her type, so in this case more dendro damage. That's why I have 91% dendro damage, I got 61 from my artifacts and the other 30% it's because I'm using different elements in my party that's not dendro. And it does also increase the elemental mastery of your other party members by 40, so it's just a nice little bonus you get from just keeping the weapon. The other 5 star weapons are usually fine if you want to use them, they will work, especially Kagura's variety has some potential since it works on her elemental skill. There are 4 star weapons that are even better for the passive, so I suggest using those instead of the 5 stars. For example, we have the Witsit. This weapon has a nice amount of base attack, crit damage is 55%, which is important, and it deals a lot of damage when she crits, so having more crit damage is nice. And this weapon can give you every 30 seconds a buff for the last 10 seconds, and the buff could be either 120% more attack, this is at refinement 5 by the way, or 96% more elemental damage, or 480 elemental mastery, which uh, uh, yeah, are all amazing buffs for Nahida, the only thing is that they will only last for 10 seconds, so it's not always 
always active and there's some problems with that. But overall, it's an amazing weapon. If you have it, give it a try. Then we have the sacrificial fragments, the weapon that I suggest using on Nahida if you don't have her signature weapon. And that's because it has elemental mastery as a substat. The base attack, it reaches uh, 510 and the passive allows her to refresh her elemental skill once in a while, every 16 seconds in this case, with a 80% chance whenever she crits. So you can use her elemental skill more often and that's usually nice because it does deal more damage and you may want to mark more enemies once in a while uh, so yeah overall a very good weapon but we also have a very very free to play option in this case which is also very very good and that's the mapa bearer mapa bearer has a very high amount of his attack it does have elemental mastery as a substat and the passive increases your elemental damage by eight percent up to two stacks for 10 seconds whenever you trigger an elemental reaction which with nahida is the thing we want to do like always. So if you just got Nahida by case or whatever and you don't know what to do with her, uh, build this weapon, level her up and she's gonna be completely insane. And that does it for weapons, uh, those are the main options I suggest. There are some other uh, weapons you can use but they are usually gimmicky or better use on other characters so i'm gonna stick to this ones and you can choose the one you like the most finally we have artifacts and with artifacts uh, you really want to keep one set which is the deep food memories this set will with the two piece increase her dendro damage by 15 percent and with the four piece set it basically reduces the dendro resistance by 30 percent for eight seconds whenever her elemental skill in this case deals damage to opponents so basically always and since the cooldown is only 2.5 seconds on her elemental skills damage you can have this buff basically always active and this does also trigger whenever the character is not on the field so yeah basically you always have 30 percent uh, less than resistance to care about on your enemies which is insanely good you can also use the noblesse oblige set if you want to use a four piece to increase your party members damage but i really suggest just using the different memories it's such a good artifact set and it does also fit her style because it's it's very like green and cute and yeah it does fit her style so uh, just for fashion use the set i guess but it's also the best one you can use as i said before you want to focus on elemental mastery and some crit stats attack percentage is fine if you get whatever uh, those are the main stats energy recharge is not really needed i do have only 110 percent energy recharge 111 actually and that's enough for me to always have my burst active so do not focus that much on energy recharge since her burst literally costs nothing 50 energy is literally nothing for your sense take elemental mastery if you don't have elemental mastery go for attack percentage is the other best thing you can get your goblet has to be dendro damage of course and your circlet you can either go with crystals or elemental mastery depends on whatever you have the least amount in this case i went for crit rate because i really wanted to crit more with my stats and since i do get more crit rate if you remember from the passive awakening elucidated uh yeah, I usually always crit with my elemental skill, which is really nice. Moving on to team comps, uh, you want to focus mostly on two reactions, which are Aggravate and Hyper Bloom. I usually mo mostly use Aggravate instead of Hyper Bloom, because I do like playing Electro characters more than Hydro characters. And if you really want to go for Hyper Bloom, uh, you don't even want to use Hyper Bloom. Uh, you want to use Nilo and a team that looks like two Dendro characters and two Hydro characters. So. If you have Nilu and Nahida as well, that's an insane team you can create. Uh, but if you want to try the Aggravate team, which is really fun and really powerful, I have some suggestions. You can either use a team like this, which uh, it's gonna perform quite well since Jungli will debuff enemies with his shield, Nahida deals an insane amount of damage, Kuki will heal your team, and also she does scale off Elemental Master as well, so she does benefit from the buffs that Nahida provides. And Yamiko has the same properties. She does more damage based on her elemental mastery as well because every point of her elemental mastery will increase the Seshu Sakura damage by 0.15% which is her elemental skill so it will deal more damage and that's really nice. Other than that, uh, Burgeon and other dendro reactions are 
not that used but you can go for that uh, or you can use a theme that looks something like uh, uh, this where we have all the elements that react with dendro which will make her burst basically increase the damage of her elemental skill by a lot 22.3% at level 7 increase the decrease the intervals actually of the damage ticks by 0.37 seconds and it does also increase the duration of her elemental burst by 5 seconds so yeah overall if you want to use a like a, a variation of the national team you can use something like this if you don't want to use barbara and you have yelan or you for example have shinchu or you have kokomi or whatever use those characters they said they're gonna be probably even better. You can even use Ayato for your Hydro character and have Kuki Shinobu as your healer for example or something like that. Just any variations of these elements will do and you're gonna have probably some fun because the damage is gonna be all over the place and enemies will die all over the place and it's probably a lot of fun. I might try it actually. Alright so that's Nahida in a nutshell and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. I will leave you as always to the gameplay because uh, uh, yeah you, you, you'll see how much damage you can deal with some teams and i hope you enjoyed the video remember to like and subscribe for more genshin impact and other games guides and more videos and i will see you in the next one have a great rest of the day enjoy the showcase and bye bye sitting 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 at the same old workplace what's the point of this chase to just bite our own Wishing, wishing, wishing that something would change. That we could turn back the page and live like our favorite fairy tales. So we love so free in a world of our fantasy. Flying on dragons through sky high city. These are childhood dreams. It's how we used to be. When we were kings and queens. Childhood dreams Oh Sometimes, sorry that I feel that way sometimes. Oh.